Well, welcome. It's our home stretch uh, with the candidate of the YPP, that's the Young Progressive Party, Professor Kingsley Mogalu. And we've uh, taken, you know, uh, a long, long trip going back, uh, looking at what's uh, gone wrong and how we can actually proffer solutions to all of this. Uh, before that break, we we're trying to look at uh, the uh, philosophy of uh, the economy and yeah. how this works. Yes. Perhaps uh, you should take off yes. from where we left off. Yeah, let me explain something. Um, the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary function of government. That's what our constitution, constitution. says. Um, in reality, we operate a capitalist economy. There is a very strong private sector in this country. Now, how does a capitalist economy function well so that it creates wealth for the poor and lifts several millions of people structurally out of poverty and into the middle class? This will be my number one focus as president of Nigeria. How do we focus on the poor and get them out of poverty and into the middle class? How do we provide jobs for the millions of our young men and women who are unemployed? So this is going to be my focus, and here's how we're going to do it. There are three things that you must have for a capitalist economy to thrive. Number one is that there must be property rights. People must have the right to own property fully and completely. In Nigeria, we don't always have that right, especially when it comes to land because all the land in Nigeria belongs to the state. Citizens can only get a, a certificate of occupancy. This is economically limiting to how much the economy can grow. Because when you own your land completely and in freehold, in perpetuity, there's much more you can do for it, you can do with, with it, it, rather than just being limited to 99 years. Number two is innovation. When I become president, the Nigerian economy will move away from depending on oil and we will make it an economy that is driven by innovation. Young men and women who are very smart invent things that can be very useful to the society, and we will make sure that those inventions are mass-produced and go into our local markets. We will also make sure that those inventors, their intellectual property, that is their right to the secret of their invention, is protected and makes them wealthy. Yeah. So. When you do that, and when you mass produce the products of innovation, the wholesalers are making money, mm -hmm. the middlemen are making money, the retailers are making money, the inventor is making money. This is how the Western world became a huge wealthy sphere in the world today. Now, when you do this, you now make the economy constantly innovating. And so you're not depending on a natural resource, you're depending on the ingenuity of the citizens. So constant inventions keep creating constant wealth, not a vanishing natural resource that one day will end. So in all of this, so, uh, in a way, this is also uh, well, like octopusy in nature, yeah. trying to also solve the problem of unemployment. Yes, of course. The problem of unemployment is a major focus for me. And this brings me to the third uh, uh, leg of the secret of capitalist success. The third is capital. You cannot run a capitalist economy as we're doing in Nigeria without capital. How many people in Nigeria can access bank loans? 77% of all bank credit in this country is given out in Lagos alone. 77%. Go and check it. The last study that I saw showed that this country is absolutely concentrated in the in terms of access to finance. So my people that in Ebony State, <laughs> God help them. In Benin, in Damaturu, God help them. Sokoto. God help them. Many of them cannot get credit. If you get credit in Ni from Nigerian banks, it's very expensive. Interest rates are high at about 25 or 30 percent. Why? Two reasons. Interest rates are high in Nigeria because infrastructure is very weak. So if a bank has to spend, uh, run two generators to make sure they have 24-hour uh, operational efficiency, they will pass the cost of those two generators into the loan. They are a business. They are not an NGO. <laughs> then number two, the other reason why credit is very expensive in Nigeria is because monetary policy, the central bank raises the monetary policy rate in order to fight inflation. One of the ways to fight inflation is by tightening the supply of money. When you make money expensive, then people are not spending it in the irresponsible way that they're spending it that, that creates inflationary pressures. 
And that is done mostly by our government because all the money they spend, 80% of Nigeria's budget is spent paying salaries of civil servants. Do you see the whole problem of the Nigerian economy? Because it is supervised by people who don't have the understanding but again, of what it requires. Professor Mungo, sorry to call you this. Yeah. You know, I used, to, I used to think that way. Yeah. I used to agree when I hear sure. uh, and I see those figures about 80 or uh, 8 or 80 percent being used sure. to pay salaries. Yeah. But when you now measure the cries of civil servants who yeah. are being owed salaries, you they know. are entitled to so, their salaries. So you now ask yourself. You, so you now ask yourself when you say this amount of uh, you know has gone into the payment of salaries, yes. and we have this huge amount of population also saying that we've not been paid. But that's because the politicians then you be asking are, are using the money? the money they should use to pay salaries for other reasons. Have you not seen allegations of what is happening in Oshun State? Have you not seen allegations of what happened in Ekiti State? When very close to the elections, civil servants started receiving a lot. Why were they not receiving those alerts before? So our politicians are reckless. They have no soul. And that is why I believe that the presidency of Nigeria from 2019 should be given by the Nigerian people to a visionary citizen who has compassion for the poor and who has the technocratic competence to manage Nigeria's economy successfully. It is no longer, it is time for something new, something different and something bold. So back to the question of unemployment. As president, and that comes to the third component of capital, I was telling you, remember I talked about property rights, yes. I talked about innovation, the third is capital. My government will set up a venture capital fund with one trillion naira. This venture capital fund, what will be its, its role? It is to pump capital that our citizens do not have access to. How did you come about that figure? Oh, because it's just a starting figure. It could be two trillion, it could be three, three trillion. But it's the minimum that it should be. 500 billion naira will come from the government. 500 billion will come from the private sector. It will be a public-private partnership. The private sector part of the partnership will manage the fund. It will not be managed by the government, so that politics will not enter it. That fund will be given in making investments in new businesses that will be set up by unemployed people. So, Mr. Joe or Madam, um, uh, uh, you know, Madam Biola or Bola doesn't have a job, right? But they have a good idea, so they make a proposal. The fund can now provide them with the equity capital but the fund will become a co-owner in that business. So the fund may own 30% or 40%, and Madam Bola owns 70 or 60%. But she has started a new business without one dime coming from her pocket. She now has a job, because she didn't have one before, maybe. And as the business grows, she begins to bring in maybe relative X, relative Y, friend um, P, friend M or L. Five people, 10 people the business begins to grow. All those people most likely did not have jobs. Do you see how, if this is done on a massive scale, millions of new jobs will be created over a period of maybe four years, or the four years which is the lifetime of an administration. I'm not telling you that it will be El Dorado 10 days after I'm sworn in as president. No, I'm telling you that I will set in place a system and you know that, that will system, break the limitations of our economy. That system has to be operable in an environment that is safe yes and that is where security comes in absolutely by the way before i continue all my plans for this country i've put them out in this book build innovate and grow my vision for our country this is my manifesto essentially how many pages do you have there? it's 275 pages and it's 25 visions one part the vision part one deals with leadership and governance the second part deals with nation building how do you build a nation I've been a nation builder for many years. I spent 17 years in the United Nations helping to fix broken countries like Rwanda, like Croatia, like Angola, and so on. So nation building, we address it here. How do we build a united Nigeria that is a nation, not just a country? Mm -hmm. Then the third part is the economy. And then the fourth and final part is foreign affairs and foreign policy. So I have a comprehensive plan for this country. And it's in this book. So you can hold me to account when I become president. I'm not going to say it wasn't me who said it. It was only my party. You know, looking at this yeah. book, what, <laughs> it then means mm -hmm. that, uh, well, you didn't just tumble on this. You've been planning. I've thought about it. I've thought about it. When I began to think about the presidency, 
um, in how long, 20, how long, 2017, how long was this? 2017, I made the decision that I would run for president of Nigeria in 2017. And I made that decision for two reasons. One, watching the poverty in this country, it just broke my heart. And I said to myself, what does my success as a professor, as a former deputy governor of the Central Bank, as a former United Nations official, what does this all mean when all around me you have people who are poor, desperately poor. I go and give a lecture at the Institute of International Affairs in Lagos, and I come out 100 people around me, crowding me, asking me for transport money. It breaks my heart. And I said, enough. I don't care anymore. I'm going to offer myself sacrificially to contest for the presidency of this country and see if we can actually change the direction of Nigeria. Because the direction in which the politicians are taking us now is a direction to nowhere. Poverty is rising, unemployment is rising, the population is rising. I, I, I would like to hear you speak to Nigerians on what, you know, plans you yeah. have to solve in the security, the security problems problem. Let me in, tell you how I'll, how I'll go about security is as follows. The best way to address security, you know, I always say something, if you cannot conceptualize it, you cannot execute it. The first thing is the mind. The secret of development and progress is the human mind. And that is why I say to you that is something to be said for somebody who is intellectually sound and has the political will to take the necessary decisions. Security. One, I will take a multidimensional approach to security. Security is more than Boko Haram. This government focused on Boko Haram. The headsmen came and became even worse than Boko Haram. There are other dimensions of security. Cyber security, our computer networks in this country. The fact that people are so poor and are jobless and their numbers are rising is a national security issue. But nobody is talking about it. So these are all the dimensions of national security. We will now examine them and prepare a plan. Number two, I will bring a professional approach to national security leadership. The current national security team in Nigeria, the leadership of it, is based on parochial considerations. It's not based on professional considerations. 90, over 99%, nearly 99% of the leadership of national security institutions in Nigeria come from one part of the country. That tells you that the leader is not serious about securing Nigeria. The person who has ultimate responsibility is more interested in giving advantage or in placing control and power within his own ethnic kit and kin. And that is why Nigeria is not secure. So I will bring a more professional approach. Third, I will bring out a new reform of Nigeria's borders. How do we control our borders? People just stroll into Nigeria from foreign countries and become Nigerians, including allegations that they sometimes have voters' cards and vote. This is happening in some parts of this country, and everybody knows it, but nobody will talk about it. That's because we don't have border security. So our security as a country, we claim to be a sovereign country, but our borders are not secure. Yeah? That's why a certain president in a certain part of the world said, look, all these Mexicans coming in here, I'm going to build a wall. And it became controversial. <laughs> but he was defending the interest of his country. Do you see what I'm saying? The final thing about uh, security reform is that I'm going to set up a new police force of 1.5 million men and women. Love, they will be trained. I, I love it. I love it anytime, trained, anytime I hear the word the police. Yes, tell us more. Yeah, a new tell you police about, force. Oh, yes. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. You about want to get the, the, the present police force sacked or what? Oh, no. The fact is we don't have a present police force. That is something that exists in theory. Let me tell you why. You have 350,000 policemen in this country for a population of 200 million. Now, out of that 350,000, about one third of them are guarding VIPs in their homes, politicians, following them around in convoys and terrorizing people on the streets. Are they protecting you and me? No, they are protecting our political overlords who have kept us poor, and in return for keeping us poor, they deserve the protection of the police. So, now, Another 70 to 80 percent, we've had reports, they are ghost workers. So maybe you have, in reality, 200,000 policemen. They are ill-equipped, they're not well-trained, and they're not well-paid. So all they do is just line up on the streets, waiting your carry. My friend, your brother, they here, drop something now. 
Is that how a country can be secure? That's why I say we need a new police force. We're a big country and we have lots of security challenges. So we are going to recruit 1.5 million new policemen and women and that's new jobs. So maybe you know, if you, you don't you have you a job, you, know, you, you know. might be thinking <laughs> about the police force in Kingsley Mogalu's presidency. But again, uh, Professor Mogalu, yes. do you think that the pro police force as yes. presently constituted uh, well, would welcome any kind of you know, it is not change listen, because because if you if Suleiman, everyone is talking about the pain Suleiman, and the problems of am, the police Suleiman, I am as it is Suleiman, at the moment, I am, Suleiman, I am a leader. Go and check my track record. I don't give excuses. I am not looking for the permission of the police as president to reform the police. It's my job as president to secure Nigeria, and I will do it regardless of who doesn't like it. I, I'm, I'm running out of time. I just can't believe That's that okay. it's, almo it's almost an hour we've been having <laughs> this conversation. Yeah. But one thing I love so much, and uh, being an anchor you know, for over two decades, I've always asked this question of politicians. Yes. Would you like to go on a debate with other contestants of and speak about the issues? Yeah or talk about Nigeria? Yes, I have already challenged President Muhammad Buhari to a debate, and I'm challenging President Muhammad Buhari again, and I'm challenging whoever becomes the presidential candidate of the PDP coalition, if it continues to hold, to a debate. And I'm saying to President Buhari, you cannot dodge, Mr. President. You cannot hide behind the back of the vice president and send him to debate with presidential candidates. He is not the president. We elected Muhammad Buhari as the president of Nigeria. He must come and answer to Nigerians about his performance in four years. That's what democracy is about. You've got to be accountable. You cannot say that you're a Democrat when you don't like transparency. You have refused to sign the amended electoral act, which would make the electoral process better and more transparent. You've refused to sign it for vested interests that are not the national interest. Mr. Buhari, the president, is now trying to hide behind the back of the vice president. You cannot send the vice president to debate for you. The vice president is not you. The vice president is the vice president. The president is the president. So a president must be able to come out and defend his performance himself. That is the mark of a mature democracy. And if you don't want to do that, I'm sorry, we are not going to accept it. We, the citizens of this country, are asking President Buhari, he must step out and debate us. He's going to debate me, and I'm not going to accept sending uh, officials of his administration because we did not elect those people. We elected him. What, why, why are you saying he's hiding at the back of uh, uh, another professor like yourself? Uh, you, 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 because if you're a professor, yeah. the president can say, Professor, go face another professor that and tells tell him you, our plans. That tells you that there is an absolute condescension towards the Nigerian people. I can never, as president, feel too big to be able to send the vice president to stand in for me with people who are contesting for the presidency. It is disrespectful of the citizens. It is disrespectful of the democratic process. And it indicates whether or not you have the, com the confidence to discuss your competence or otherwise. Let's close on this uh, quickly. Uh, you've always used you know, words like when yes. and not the conditionality clause of if, if yes. when you become president, yes. how sure are you of being the president in 2019? I believe nobody is God, but I believe that the Nigerian people have had enough. They've had enough of the nonsense from politicians. We are in a state of slavery. The 2019 election is not an election just for the sake of an election. It is an election of our destiny. It is a choice between freedom and slavery under the political class. It's a choice between poverty and prosperity. It's a choice between security and insecurity. And that's why I want to make a special appeal to the middle class in this country who have sat back in their comfort zone for far too long and allowed these incompetent and visionless politicians to steal our future. Go directly to the poor people, bribe them with 5,000 naira, and keep coming back in elections. In 2019, our middle class should come out. Millions of them. Nobody is going to tell a professional, come and take 5,000 naira and vote for me. You know that that will not happen. But because our professionals don't participate in the electoral, electoral process, 
they allow these processes to be rigged by politicians. And that limits the possibilities of these professionals themselves. I am saying to every Nigerian, I am not a money back politician. I have a vision for Nigeria. Support us financially. Support us financially. Because these politicians are spending money, your money and my money, that they have stolen from our commonwealth. I have not stolen it, but we need to change. If you believe that Nigeria deserves something new, something different, something bold, come to support us in the YPP and my vision for the presidency financially so that we can do the things we need to do. We don't need the billions the crooked politicians need. We just need a fraction of it for logistics and to promote our message for change. Real change, not fake change. Well, a fine place uh, to switch off the gas here. <laughs> Professor Margolu, many thanks for joining us on, Thank you. on the program.